today we are going to talk about how to deploy a machine learning model inside, build the Docker image, run the container, and create an API endpoint. But you know, there's a problem. I don't really like the environment that I'm in. This is a better environment. Come check out the office super quick and then we'll continue with the video. As you can see, many, many glass walls. For those of you other uplifters that want to come on home, Reno Tahoe is your place. For the rest of you in Reno, this is our beautiful building, office, that well. It's relatively empty here in the beginning. Look at that beautiful sign, Kevin's office, which we're going to call the Virginia City Conference Room once people get here. And our lovely Amy dubbed it my office. <laughs> Anything to get me in here. Wow, I must not work very much. <laughs> now to the actual machine learning production stuff. I found this article super helpful, and a lot of what I'm going to be demonstrating will come in part from this article. You can mix things up, all that fun stuff, but Luigi, I think you killed it if you're out there. Um, anyways, this is going to describe an API for like, you know, how Uber Eats delivers, you know, machine learning estimate estimations via post requests and how to set up the rest api and all that fun stuff and i'm going to show you how i actually do it on my laptop uh, i am using a mac but what's the beauty of docker it doesn't matter what you're using right because it's going to partition our os and then when we build it and we give it to the rest of our teammates the fantastic part is it doesn't matter if they're on linux or windows or whatever the case may be it's going to work for them so I'm going to show you the directory that I'm in, where the directory is. Now, I hate when people go on for nine minutes and then I can't get something to work. So let's just show you exactly what to do right away. You see if it builds, and if it builds for you, fantastic. If not, you go on to some other resource. I'm the same way, right? Do your Google foo. Show me that it works, dude. Prove to me that what you built is a running application, and then I'll worry about actually learning all the material in between. Great, I'm, I'm the same way. So you can see I have Docker running. Actually, make sure that you have Docker running in the background right somewhere. And the I'm, I'm just in a regular Jupyter Lab notebook. This is just local right now, I'm not anywhere. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. Like I don't have any Docker images right now. It's completely empty, right? I don't have any Docker running containers, and I don't have any Docker containers period right so I'm I'm flat I'm, I'm from scratch if you do great you then you've probably already used docker but anyways it's flat it's it's from the beginning let's just run the steps and then we can explain what actually happens so we have docker build dash t docker a docker dash api dash f docker file dot so that's going to build our image you can see that it's going to take some time I'll cut back once it's done. It'll take a couple seconds. Okay, I'm back, so I lied to you. It was actually 211 seconds now. My Wi-Fi that I'm on is not the strongest, and I'm behind a VPN, so take it with a grain of salt. It might build a lot faster. I actually think this Jupiter uh, image that I pulled from took a while. Anyways, so showed you the first step. Let's run the second step. Docker run dash it dash p. So port is going to be 5,000, 5,000, doctor dash api. Move my fat head out of the way. Python 3, api.py. Right, this is going to now run the container. We built the image, run the container. Loading, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Now we actually have you know, a, a server that's happening, right? And again, it says it's serving the Flask app API. It says environment production, but then right here, big warning, this is a development server, don't use it for production. That's true, don't use it for production, right? Just use it to, to dev out your, your pipelines like we're doing here. So now that we have this guy open, this is actually a development server that we can send requests to, right? So if we send a post request to this guy, right? Just picture it like, like a website, right? Like this is your Uber Eats or your wherever and you are a customer and you submit your order and now it's like ping and it comes back and it's like, how long is my wait time, right? Here, here we go. I'm gonna send data to it, which is what it says, right? And we should see a reaction to this guy. Let's curl to it. You can see that my curl is pretty flat relative to this. And boom, look at how quick that was, right? I got a prediction back super duper quick. The one thing I wanna mention about the curls, you might have to flatten it out. You can see that, you know, if you copy and paste it directly from here, it's gonna throw you an error. Just click 
backspace a couple times in front of these first couple columns so that the curl is on one flat line. It kept throwing me errors, so just keep that in mind when you're on this. I get a prediction. I don't know what this is, right? Let's call it 12 minutes for Uber Eats, right? I send a prediction. It's like 12.27 minute, uh, minutes. And what actually happened was, and I have a bunch of print statements, now that we actually know this works, you sent a post request to a machine learning endpoint API. We're happy. We got our prediction back. Now, like, let's actually talk about, like, what we did, right? Because showed you it works. Now let's talk. So what actually happened, I sent the data and I have print statements within um, the api.py file. And so you can see it says arg values pass, right? These are the guys that I sent in the curl. And you can see that the api.py has the same thing, right? So it says print arg values passed. Okay, so this is the post request. I'm not gonna dig into this uh, Flask application that I built super deep, right? Like this copy it, use it. I'm not a massive Flask user as, as it is, right? Uh, this is where, you know, the job of data scientists, machine learning engineers, and DevOps come together for whatever their company is doing to like, you know, submit like a real API endpoint. But for this, this is a great way to develop. So here's Flask, right? You can go research Flask. You can see here's the required features that I have in there, right? And then, you know, Flask has to parse that, right? So the required, and then I add those features to um, the parser, and it's, you know, for feature and feature, it has to be a type float, it's required equals true, it's location is JSON, right? It's, that's the type that's coming from the post request. And then help means like if I don't pass LSAT, right? Like let's, let's say I do this curl command one more time, and then I don't pass a value, right? So we're looking at the very bottom right there, and I just take out the LSAT value, LSAT value, and I click enter. Guess what happens? It writes no LSAT provided. That's what's happening right here in the parser. It's saying, hey, I saw the input columns, no bueno, right? Because the no feature was provided. That's the response that I get back. So here is the rest of the API.py, which is very simple, right? For those of you who have done machine learning, all that I'm really doing is I'm saying, require these arguments, right? So args is a dictionary, right? So it comes in like this. I vectorize it, right? Meaning, you know, almost all sklearn packages, I'm using sklearn for this, right? Obviously, like, you know, there's better ML models, right? That you can use better, better, you know, relative. I'm just saying there's more advanced ML models you can use, right? You go design some crazy neural network for it that's not the point of this and so i just pass the args and it just checks like hey for f and self dot args right actually pull out the value so it's going to strip out the 15.0 and the zero and blah 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 and then it's going to reshape it and you can see that's exactly what happens in this guy it pulls it out right it makes it machine readable right and then it comes down here and actually calls the classifier dot predict and then i actually get the prediction back right that's that's the return now the api.resource, this is the prediction, right? This is the prediction class that the Flask API is calling. And when you call dot predict, it's calling this post method, okay? So again, read that entire article. It's actually a lot more detailed in terms here. And I hope that between my dialogue and that dialogue, you'll get better. I actually learned more about Flask this time. And the rest of this is like meta metadata that you can keep, right? So like I could, uh, this even says metadata path, right? Like I could store metadata, like, you know, CSVs and other things that I want to keep along the way, you know, for, for auditing, for track performance, all that kind of stuff. So that's the API.py. What is the Docker file? Like how did I actually build the Docker image? So there was a couple things. So this from statement right here, it says Jupyter slash SciPy notebook. This is pulling an image down from Docker Hub. I did not write this image, right? Someone, I think it's Jovian or who, who is this person? Typically you can see who published it. Somebody great out there published this image that all of us can use on Docker. That way we're all in the same playing field regardless of where you're coming from. I copy my requirements.txt file, right? So it says run pip install for those of you in Python, right? This is a regular pip install, but it's just doing it to, um, it, it's doing it for the excess packages that I don't already have coming from this image. So the requirements.tsc is just Flask, Flask RESTful, and Joblib, right? So Joblib is like when you wanna, you've trained your model, now you wanna save your model, now you wanna do predictions. And then all it does is it simply runs, so it makes a directory, and it's just called model. Uh, the model director, this home Jovian, actually comes from the Jupyter SciPy notebook. Um, the model file itself is clf.joblib, 
and then the metadata is metadata.json, right? So like that's your excess data, uh, that's the excess data that can come off your pipeline if you feel like saving extra things. All I do is just copy the train.py and the api.py, right, to the home directory files in the Docker, right? So this is, these are the files that are coming in this directory over here on the left, and then it's being saved to the actual Docker image itself. So when you build it, your train.py file is also in the image copy the API and then it says run Python 3 train.py okay so when I actually build this file it's gonna go run my machine learning pipeline and do all the training and then it's gonna spit out some endpoint model so the train.py file for all the data scientists will look probably like the most familiar right like we've probably all written a million models in our life right the API is actually like the unique part of our career that we you know don't do probably as often right as you get into more like machine learning engineering which actually requires quite a bit of my time now you do but this is gonna look you know um, very consistent with what you've seen so all I'm doing in this guy is I'm actually loading the Boston data set and it's very and again this comes from the article which is great all it does is just shuffle the Boston train test split right fantastic it fits the model here's the parameters the regressors and then it is a gradient boosted regressor. So that's the ensemble model. It fits the model. It gives us some extra stuff. So metadata actually that's being saved in the Docker is the train mean square and the test mean square. And then it serializes. What is serialize? Like save our model so we can use it later, right? So it just dumps the classifier, the model path, and then it just says print, serializing metadata, blah, blah, blah. It dumps it out. So now at the end, right? So I've built this image right from this from the very initial step right if we go back to ml ops right docker build dot dash t you know docker api dot docker file or docker file dot means build that docker file run the train dot py so i kind of split these guys so that we can try to do one thing at a time so we have docker build docker api docker file so the docker file right goes and pulls the image grabs the requirements.txt installs the requirements.txt and then what happens is it actually copies all those guys and then does the python3 train.py so then once it gets to this step your docker file comes to the train.py runs the file what happens at the end of the file we actually get a working machine learning model right here's our classifier it's now saved i know that I, it kind of feels like maybe the video is off skewed i didn't want to cheese you out and not show you actually where the model is saving and all that fun stuff um, and how to actually like see the metadata that's coming off of your model and like how to actually get inside the container where it's running right because because right now when I type in um, When I type in anything right to my bash, right? It's just local Right meaning local like it's on my my Mac right now. It's on my actual laptop now I need to get inside of the actual docker container and So there's a command to do this right so first off I want to check that I have again. I have the container running so it's docker ps and you can see that I have a container ID and I have the image and I have the port and I have these names and all this stuff. So I do have this, you know, Docker container running. Fantastic. Now, what do I actually have to do to get inside of the shell, right? Like the bash command of Docker itself. So here's a little command that I use super often that's to actually view inside of the container so it's docker exec dash it so that just the dash it allows you to actually script in this terminal right here so and then it grab grab your container id right here so the running container associated with this guy and then click bash right so what it's going to do this dash it is going to open the container it's going to open the bash right here on your local mac even though you're inside the container so watch when i click run you can now see that I'm inside the base root of the container itself. So if I click something like ls, you can see that, hey, these files look pretty familiar to what I have locally, but I'm inside the container. I have the model folder and the work folder. And if you keep in mind, right, when I actually created the Docker file up here, I did a make directory model, that's what happened. And then I did a model directory home, joven, model, right? So that's where my model is coming. Where's the model file? It's clf.joblib. Okay, and then where's the metadata file? It's metadata, it's metadata.json. So then if I go into model, let me remind you I'm in the container, you can see that I have both here. Like, so this is where you could save intermittent steps or CSVs. If you wanna now get out of this container and see, you know, now you wanna go back to your local Mac, just simply type exit, clear it out. 
and then click LS. Now you're back to just the local directory, right? So then when I come back into MLOps and I actually run the container, right? So I go and I push it and there's a port open, right? It can Now I can run Python 3 API.py. So the train has already been ran, right? Now I actually need to run the API.py file, right? Because this is what's going to actually create us like the development server. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the curl request is going to have the server, right? That's over here. I'm going to make sure I get my hands straight. The server over here is just running. Act like it's your front end website. It's just, it's Uber. It's whatever. It's Boston housing pricing, whatever. And then I'm going to now send it data, right? So it's going to ping this guy and it's going to send me back a request. A great picture is actually this one right here, again, from Luigi. Right, so I have some observation, a REST API, and a prediction. So I send an observation, it goes to the REST API, hits the model, model comes back to the REST API, sends the prediction. That's what happens here. So as soon as I click this, I've got in there, send it, we send them the right data, otherwise our machine learning will want to do. Boom, we get a prediction almost instantaneously. I hope this video is informative, guys. Feel free to poke around. Like, I mean, I don't even come off as an expert for developing APIs. I, I would never even do that. I'm just saying, like, hey, it becomes super helpful as you get more and more into, um, you know, the machine learning engineering aspects of the day-to-day, -day, you know, data science work. I hope it was helpful. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it and a lot of fun learning about it. Thanks. Have a great day.